In this video, I'm going to show you how to use HTMX and Flask together to create an active search. So what I mean by this is I can search for something in this search bar and as I type, it will search. So if I want to search for Justin, for example, I get a bunch of Justin Bieber songs and Justin Timberlake and so on. The reason is, is because I'm searching my database full of like top 100 songs. So if I search for someone else, let's say Taylor, I get a bunch of Taylor Swift songs. So the idea here is as I type, it will search for me. So if I type T, it will search all the song titles and songs that use the letter T. Uh, so for example, let's say I want to search for the song Bad Habit. I can just search here and we see the titles of the song Bad Habit appear. Uh, one Bad Habit and two Bad Habits, plural. Uh, but you see, it can search both the title and the performer. So I'm going to show you how to do that with HTMX in this video, which is a tool that you can use uh, to basically do some front end stuff without using any JavaScript. The idea is it extends HTML and basically all you have to do is put some attributes on existing HTML elements and then your backend needs to return like HTML instead of JSON. So I'll show you all that in this video. And I just wanted to mention that if you need help with something like this in your project, like one on one, I can help you with that. So I have something called my coaching program where I work with people one on one. So if you need help with this or anything else related to your project, you can go to prettyprintit.com slash coaching, or you can click on the link in the description below to learn more about my coaching service. So with all that said, let's get into creating this example using HTMX and Flask to create this active search. To get started, let me show you what I have first. So let me show you my database. I can open that using SQLite and I'll just select star from song. And here we see I have 30,000 songs. So these represent all the songs that were on the Billboard Top 100 up until like the end of last year. So about 30,000 unique songs. And it has the artist of the song, the name of the song. It has the date that the song debuted on the Top 100. It has its peak position and it has the number of weeks that the song was on the chart. So that's all the data that I have here in the database. And I have this model here, song to reflect that, right? So we have ID, title, performer, chart debut, peak position, time on chart. So this is what we're going to be searching. Next, let me show you the template that I have. I have this template and it's simply a table here with the header part. So here's what it looks like and a search bar here. So I'm going to convert this search bar to one that uses active search with HTMX. So let's get started with this. The first thing I need to do is I need to create an endpoint that allows me to search. So the idea here is this endpoint will take in a query string. This query string will have like the actual query that the user is searching for. And then I'll take that query and search the database. So I'll query the database. So main routes, and I'll call this search. And I'll name the function search as well. And what I want to do in here is I want to use the request object from Flask to get the query information. So here, I'll just call this Q. So Q is short for query. And I'll do request.args.get Q, right? So this will come from the query string. And I'll show you this in a moment. But this is the first thing I need to do. And now what I want to do is I want to use this query to search the database. So the first thing I'll do is I'll print out Q so we can see it. And now what I want to do is I want to search the database if the user types in anything. So I'll say if Q and if Q exists, that means they're searching for something. So I want to query the song table and I want to filter by a couple of things. So I have the title and the performer and I'm going to allow the users to search on both of those fields at the same time. So to do that, I can filter by both of them. So for title, I'll start with that. I can have in the filter song dot title. So I'm going to filter on the title column and I want to use I contains. So what I contains does is it makes it to where the case doesn't matter. So if they type all lowercase or all caps or any mix of case, then it doesn't matter. And it's going to search the field to see if it contains the value. So I want to see if the song title contains Q. So whatever they type in for Q. So let's say they're searching for Alan Jackson here. So they type A. So the letter A is contained inside of Alan. So Alan Jackson could be one of the results. If they type AL, then it narrows it down even more, but it's still in Alan Jackson and so on. So this is the first part of the filter that I need, but I also want to filter on the performer. So what I can do is I can add an or, and there are a couple ways of adding or, but what I'll do is I'll just add the pipe here and I'll do another one. So song performer, I contains, 
and this one will also take Q. So it's going to look at the song title and the song performer here. Next, I want to order by some things. So what I can do is I can add on an order by at the end. I can say, I wanna order by the peak position. So I want number one songs to appear before like number two and so on. So I need to order by ascending. So because one should be the first thing that appears and two is after one. And then after that, I want to order by, let's say the year that they debuted. So another order by, and then song, we can do chart debut. And then this one will be descending. So newer songs will appear first. And then also I don't want to return all the results because there are 30,000 songs in the database. And if they type like one character, like an A, it could return like thousands of results and that won't look good on the front end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit this uh, to let's say 100 results. So you can change this to be whatever you want. And then I want to get all the results here. So this is a long line. So what I'll do is I'll break it up so it goes across multiple lines. So I'll break it there on the dot and I'll just put a backslash. And yeah, I think that's fine. So it starts off song.query and then it queries everything. So I just need to put this into a value. I'll call this results. And then in the case that Q has no value, I'll just put results as an empty list. So now what I need to do is I need to return this to some template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a template called search results. So search results, and this will hold just partial data. So let me show you what this looks like. So I'm passing results to the template. I'll create another template called search results. And I'll go in here. And the idea is I just want to fill in the rows for the table. Like I don't want the table itself because I have that defined in the index. So here I just want to add the rows for the T body. So what that means is I need like a table row. So the TR tag, and I also need the TD tags, right? So I'll have five uh, sets of TD tags in each TR because I have uh, five things that I could display. I have the title and this should be a title like that performer, peak position, time will chart and chart debut, right? So I want to reflect those in the partial here because that's how HTMX works. And we'll see that once we integrate HTMX. Um, so this is going to be result.title and I'm going to loop over this here. So for results in results. So I want to loop over every result that returns from the query in search. And then I'll just create four more table cells and one will be for a title, one performer, the next one will be peak position. And then let's see here, time on chart and chart debut. So time on chart, and then we have chart debut. Okay, so that's all we need for HTMX because the idea with HTMX is it will take the HTML that is returned to it and inject it into a particular part of the page. So I don't have to build the entire table. I just need to give it the rows that I want to insert into the table. So now let's give this a shot. Let's start up the app. So flask run, and I'll go over to my app and I'll go to a search and the query string takes a question mark and then a Q and then the equal sign. So Q equals and then whatever the query is. So if I want to search for Taylor, for example, I get a bunch of results here. We see some Taylor Swift results. We see, I'm sure there's some other people, Johnny Taylor and so on. So these are all the results that match Taylor. If I want to type DRA, I see Drake appears because his name starts with DRA. And one more, let's see if there's any artist named Anthony. And yes, I see Mark Anthony here as some results. So this is the idea by just searching uh, using the query parameter here. So Q equals A. The back end will get this, put it into Q, and we see Anthony uh, DRA Taylor. And it just runs this query. So it's filtering on the title and the performer to see if it's contained in any of those fields. And then it orders them and then it uh, returns the results. So now we need to get this to actually display in the form. So let me go back to the home page. What I want is as soon as the user starts typing, like DRA, for example, it should search for Drake and then it should fill in the results. Uh, from that into this table here. So let's get that working. So the first thing I need to do is I need to bring in HTMX into the template. So let's go to the index template. We need to add it here to the head. So I can go to the HTMX website and then I can go to script like this and just paste it in here. And now what I need to do is I need to set up HTMX to work with this. So I only need to add some HTMX fields on the input because that's what I'm going to be modifying. 
So there are a few that I want. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give this a name. So name Q. So HTMX knows the name of the parameter to send over to the back end when it's doing the search. So Q is the same as this Q here. So Q for query. And then next, I want to tell it the endpoint to call. So I'm going to use HX Git. So I'm telling it to send a Git request to my server to this particular endpoint. So slash search. So that's the name of the endpoint here, slash search. Next, I want to tell it what the trigger is. So what will trigger it to send a request to the search endpoint? So HX trigger equals, and then the trigger should be key up. So basically the user types in something. So key up will be the first part. So key up. But I also want to make sure that the input has been changed uh, just in case they hit like the arrow key or something. That's also a key up. So I want to make sure the text in the input has changed. So key up and change uh, covers those two things. And then I want to delay it. So like I don't want to send this the instant they change something or press a, a key. I want it to delay by, let's say, 500 milliseconds. That way it gives them a little bit of time to type. So if they want to type in a bunch of characters at once, it will only search once instead of searching each time they type a new character. And then finally, I need to give it a target. So it's going to get some HTML back. So these table rows, and it needs to insert them somewhere. So it will insert them into the T body. So HX target. And I'm going to give this an ID of results here. And then the T body here will also have ID of results, right? So it's going to take those table rows and inject them in between these two body tags. So visually, it will go in the table. So that's actually it. That's all you need to do with HTMX to get this to work. You just add some extra attributes to the input. You put an ID on the place where you want the output, and then you can see. So let's go back here and refresh the page. Now let me try searching for DRA again. And now we see the table populates with the data. It's ordered properly. Uh, we see peak position one here. Looks like Drake has a lot of number one songs. And then number two, three, and it just goes on. Uh, we see the chart debut. So the newest one debuted on uh, July 2nd, 2022, and so on. So as you can see, I didn't really need to do anything for the HTMX to work. Like it's only one, two, three attributes that I need to add for HTMX. And then, of course, I need an endpoint on the back end that does what I uh, want to do, which is search. So that took the longest amount of time. But as far as HTMX, we saw that it's pretty simple because it just works on the idea of extending HTML and then using HTML results in doing something with them. In this case, injecting them into the T body here in the page. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you want to grab the code for this, I'll have a link in the description below. If you have any questions about anything I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.